Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Rancho Mirage City Council meeting. It's the Library and Observatory Board, Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. And this is a regular meeting, and this is Thursday, July, Thursday, <laughs> September 5. Yes. Oh, like I know, I know. Well, it'll be here before we know it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'd like to start off with our flag salute. And Christy, would you kind of conduct us along of the course. way? Thank you. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Thank you, Christy. And now we'll move on to roll call. And would you do that also? Council Member Kite. Welcome back, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Council Member Townsend. Here. Council Member Weil. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Hobart. Here. And Mayor Smotrich. Here. Thank you so much. And now we're going to start off with some presentations. And first of all, uh, we are going to have the Taste of Summer recap by Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce. Um, well, Katie Stice and another guest that she's bringing with her. <laughs> I knew you didn't look like Katie. <laughs> no, we, we, we changed our outfit today, so. Okay. Um, Welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, City Council staff. My name is Matt Johnson. Uh, I'm the owner of uh, Johnson Commercial Real Estate right here in Rancho Mirage. I'm also on the uh, Board of Directors for the Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce. Today we come in appreciation of the city and the title sponsorship for the Taste of Summer Rancho Mirage. You'll hear all the details and data in Katie's report, uh, but I wanted to share our thanks because this event would not have happened without your title sponsorship. Taste of Summer Rancho Mirage became an, a powerful economic driver this summer, and it generated business and buzz within the valley and beyond. With a dedicated board and staff, this event has truly reached new heights. Increased participation on all levels, a well-managed and well-marketed and well-coordinated event resulted in a grand five-week food fest extravaganza. Uh, we are all very proud building business part as partners right here in Rancho Mirage. Thank you. Um, please welcome Katie Stice, our Chamber Executive Director, uh, to, prevent, to present the uh, report at this time. Thanks, Matt. And welcome to you, Katie. Hi, how is everyone today? Good. Good, good to see you all. Um, let me get this slideshow going. There it is. So I'm just going to give you an overview of Taste of Summer Ranch Mirage 2019, and it was a grand success. Our first slide shows our media marketing companies that all supported Taste of Summer Ranch Mirage efforts. Every single one of these companies went above and beyond for the chamber, the city, and this event by matching dollar for dollar our spend or more in some cases. Our media partners added on various interviews throughout the five weeks, additional social media, website promotions, and more. The total media value was $60,000. Wow. Is your screen up? No, Katie. Oh, shuckers. I'm blank. <laughs> I've lost. And I'm gonna explain really, really well. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> This next slide shows the general media footprint and exposure. The event was absolutely everywhere this summer and the exposure was off the charts. NBC Palm Springs featured us weekly with different chefs and nonprofits as well. So let's talk a little bit about participation. This year we had 30 restaurants participating, which was our goal. And um, Rhonda Henry, who's on our staff as operations and events manager, made sure that we reached our <laughs> 30 uh, participating restaurants. That was a 42% increase from last year. Next, let's talk a, li a little bit about the results that came in. As you can see, consensus shows um, residents truly enjoy appetizers and drinks in Rancho Mirage, which <laughs> we all enjoyed as well. Um, I didn't add all, um, so we're still waiting for some of the data to still come in. And I didn't add our lower numbers, but we are addressing anyone who came in with um, any low numbers as far as participation goes. 
and we're really helping them problem solve for next year. As an example, there was a restaurant that just did um, beer offerings only and no food. And according to our consensus, they probably need to do both, which they will next year. Some of those numbers are pretty exciting, though. Norma's and Dickie's seeing over 1,000 people um, who came in and purchased appetizers. Pretty neat. Next, we absolutely love our nonprofits, and the Chamber is the only Chamber in the Valley that offers a fundraising program for them. About $20,000 was raised this year from participants listed here and the Chamber. The services we provided um, will be provided in the community, and so you can really see how far the roots go from the sponsorship into your community. Next is membership. So in total, we had 19 new members join the Chamber of Commerce just because of this event. Yeah. Really great. Website statistics grew 82%, an increase from this year over last year. Um, that website is also run by the city, and we don't take that for granted. It's a gorgeous website and is key to the event's success. Staff would constantly send updates and changes over to Jess, who would get it to the webmaster, who would update the website regularly. <clears throat> you can also see 14,000 visitors to the website and over 54,000 page views total. That means each person goes from page to page throughout that website. And this page is a quote page. It was important for me to add this. You'll get this later so you can really dive deep into some of these. But it was important because the feedback from the community was very overwhelming. Um, when a restaurant comes to you and says, I don't know what I would have done this summer without Taste of Summer happening, it really shows the impact of this program. <clears throat> and lastly, thank you so much. We love our Chamber of Commerce work because of programs like these. Let us know if you have any questions that we look forward to working with you in the future. Well, thank you, Katie. It was an amazing event. Any comments from the? Katie, great job. And look forward Thanks. to next year. Uh, I missed the amount that was distributed to the various charities locally. Do you have that figure? $20,000. Okay, that's great. And was that equally done or? More charities got more if they sold more tickets? Good question. So last year, the charities raised about $9,000. So this year, we were able to add not only the amount of charities participating, I think went from 12 to 20 partic participating nonprofits, but they also were able to raise $20,000 total. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. We couldn't have done it without our city. Thank you. Well, we're very proud of you, Katie. Thanks. I wonder why all this big turnaround since you came. What did you do? Oh, it's just you, you know? dear. <laughs> just you. Your leadership is fabulous, and your board is wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm really dedicated to this industry. I appreciate no, you are. that. No, Thank you, you. Katie, I want you to know that I have been stopped a number of times uh, by people thanking us for the program mm -hmm. and basically saying, okay, now what's next? <laughs> and what a good sign that not mm -hmm. only was it successful, but they're looking forward to the next event. And so likewise, it was a great success. Congratulations, thanks. Thank you so much. We, yeah, now the pressure is on to raise the caliber right exactly. even bigger next year. So uh, we're, uh, Rhonda and I am on the board, we're down for the challenge, so. Pressure is always much. there. Yeah, it is, that's a good thing. Well, you have indeed set a new standard and uh, we appreciate everything you've done. And if there are no more comments on this dais here, how about if we come down and take a picture with you and all the gang that you've brought? We would love that. Anyone who is with the Chamber of Commerce or with the event to come on up and do a picture with our uh, title sponsor supporters in our city, please. Okay, we'll meet you down there. <clears throat> we going? We're going. All right. I say, you want to come with? Okay, everybody. Gabe, how about you coming down too? Gabe gets this picture of
Thank you all, and thank yes. you, uh, Marcus. Uh, maybe we'll get some wallet size and some 8x10s. It will be like high school all over again. OK. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, it was a joy to uh, experience all your hard work. And uh, needless to say, you made a great impact on our whole community. And uh, it was known uh, valley-wide. So you've done a great job, and we're so proud. OK, thank you. And now we're going to move on to uh, a presentation by Deborah McGarry. And Deborah? OK. Deborah's going to be a little bit later, but now we're going to have Jennifer Kuzak. And she is from the Wildfire Prevention and Safety Presentation by Southern California Edison. Welcome. Thank you. My it's a hard act to follow, following Katie, right? My um, presentation may be not as fun, but hopefully you'll find it um, important. So I'm Jennifer Kuzak. I'm the Government Relations Manager for Southern California Edison, and I cover the city of Rancho Mirage and a number of other cities in the Coachella Valley and also San Bernardino County. As you can imagine, wildfire has become one of the most talked about and important issues for us as a company. And for the state. Ten of the largest fires in California history have happened in just the last five years. And the intensity of these fires has grown because of the drought and bark beetle infestation and a number of other reasons. And so wildfires always been an issue in California, but of course, most recently, just the intensity and the magnitude and the loss of these wildfires has grown. Here is the California Public Utility Commission map. It um, was drafted by CAL FIRE. It's on the California Public Utility Commission website, and it outlines the Tier 3 and Tier 2 wildfire area. And you'll see that there is a Tier 2 wildfire risk area that comes down into the Coachella Valley in the foothills. Um, so Southern California Edison has taken this map, and any circuit that touches those high fire risk areas has become a high priority circuit for us. And we're doing a number of upgrades, including um, covered conductor, <clears throat> composite poles, composite cross arms, fast tracting fuses, and um, reclosures. We've been doing a lot of overhead inspections, so we've inspected every single overhead circuit in those high fire risk areas and have identified a lot of work to be completed. And although there's not a lot of overhead that serves your community, you are still connected to the larger grid. So this does impact you, and what we do to improve the grid does help with your reliability and the safety of your community. So situational awareness is another important factor in reducing wildfire risk, and that includes watching the weather, because high winds, low humidity make for uh, a recipe for a, a big fire. And we are entering in, or we're in the middle of wildfire season. Um, 
and so we are watching the weather very carefully. In fact, this weekend we see a very um, high wind forecast with low humidity that could be, a, if, if there was a spark, regardless of the cause, it could be a high fire that could get out of control. So we have installed weather stations throughout our system and we have a, a, a situational awareness center that monitors the weather 24 seven. Our own meteorologists and fire scientists that, go, that predict the weather based on science. And we're plugging all this data into a smart computer and we're getting to a point where we're gonna have better data that will help us predict and hopefully uh, um, eliminate any spark caused by our system that could trigger a fire. So we're trying to do everything we can do to reduce wildfire risk. We've installed high definition cameras throughout Southern California. In fact, our camera at Santiago Peak saw the holy fire when it started and we were able to alert authorities right away. Here, while the, our high definition cameras are available to the public for viewing and, and of course our first responders can also view them. In addition, our weather stations are shared with the mesowest.utah.edu website so that all that data can be used by the public for better predicting and modeling. We have increased our vegetation management trimming. Um, we have in-house arborists, and we're increasing the number of trees and the distance of trimming. So we were at four feet, the required distance was four feet, now we're going to 12 feet clearances. And then public safety power shutoff is probably the most impactful um, part of our program, and that is where we would proactively de-energize the lines to prevent wildfire. And of course, there'd be an extreme condition that would cause this, but like this weekend coming up, there are lines that run into the mountains, and um, as we see high wind, low humidity, um, and, the, and the chance of something blowing into our lines and causing a spark, we will be watching that carefully. So we also send our crews into the circuits to visually inspect the circuits before we de-energize, but um, it is something where we are warning our customers to, to be prepared for an outage. <clears throat> and then there's a series of notifications that go out to our customers um, before and then during and after. We're gonna be communicating with our customers about the outage and why. And then so, but our overarching message and, and maybe the most important um, takeaway is to be prepared. And so if, if nothing else, having this conversation encourages folks to be prepared for an outage, whether it be a wildfire, whether it be an earthquake, because during all this talk of wildfire, we had an earthquake in Trona. Uh, so the, the risk is very real, and so we just ask our customers to always be prepared, always have a plan. And you have a wonderful Emergency Preparedness Commission, very engaged, your community is very fortunate for all that you do to help them get the information they need. Um, so knowing how to open up their garage door if the power goes out, having a kit, um, sturdy shoes, gloves, water, keeping your tank full, all of those um, tips. Um, we have lists of information on our website on how to be prepared. We also have a medical baseline program where customers who require medical equipment can register. That puts them on a critical care list for us and they get additional communication and attention. And if there is an outage over 12 hours and we cannot reach them by phone, we will send somebody to their door. And then in the event of an, a major disaster, then we can also co uh, coordinate with first responders to help address those. So we also do encourage folks to sign up for the medical baseline if they do require um, electricity for any medical need. And that could include refrigeration for insulin. And so I have more information here. And of course, it's on our website. With that, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Um, I mean, you're speaking about something that is uh, very critical to us all. And yes, we do have a wonderful uh, emergency preparedness commission and they're working very hard and I know they've been working with you also. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your appearance here today. Any comments or questions from the <coughs> council? Good, mm -hmm. Good job you all do. Thank you. Very wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And I know that uh, Jennifer talked about outages and being prepared. And I know that there was an article uh, a little while back on the Desert Sun about monitoring the power. And one of the things that I have um, started to do is carrying a little flashlight in my purse. You never know where you're gonna be, if you're gonna be in a mall or somewhere where there might be an outage. At least if you have something that you can whip out of your pocket or your purse and be able to find your way out, it really is kind of crucial. So keep it in mind. One more thing to add to your being prepared uh, list and uh, 
Thank you for all the work that uh, everyone is doing trying to get prepared. Thank you. And now we will move on to another presentation about preparedness. And this is a presentation of Rockets Books by the Community Emergency Preparedness Commission. And we have both the present chair of the commission and the past chair of the commission, Mary Lou Souter and Marcia Stein. So welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good afternoon to the City Council. We're glad to be here today, uh, for sure. This is an important topic, and it's appropriate because September nationally is a National Preparedness Month. So, uh, so you know who we are, uh, and uh, we come here at the suggestion of Rick and uh, Bunny Benaron, who uh, founded an organization called uh, Rockets. Here on you Foundation. Yeah, the Here and You Foundation and Rockets Rules. And I think you have these in front of you, these books. And they do amazing work uh, for the children in our community, actually across Southern California and beyond, to uh, teach the children about safety in many settings and awareness of safety and how to prepare in a very non-threatening manner. So uh, those of you who have children might be interested in looking at their website. Those of you who have grandchildren or great-grandchildren, uh, my, my great-grandchildren are prepared, <laughs> put it that way. So um, we're going to talk about two challenges right now that Rocket Rules has uh, presented to us that are available for our schools, for any organization that works with young children ages uh, pre-kindergarten through age uh, th through about third grade. So the schools and uh, child serving groups are invited to join Rocket Rules, to go on their website and join these two specific activities and uh, win some prizes and learn some new skills. Uh, and it's a very fun kind of activity that, uh, that they really want uh, to uh, inform the public about. So could we have the first slide, please? <clears throat> Thank you. So Shake Mob is the first activity that uh, we're talking about. <laughs> it's kind of a funny name. There's actually a Shake Mob dance, and we're going to give a demonstration later along with Isaiah, right? <laughs> uh, so um, it's a partnership with the Great Shakeout, which is a national um, effort that takes place on October 17th every year. And it's the purpose of it is to increase students and community earthquake preparedness and emergency safety skills. So schools and others who work with children are invited to register then on rocketrules.org. You can see the uh, website address there on the, the bottom of the uh, flyer. Uh, so please, uh, if you know someone who has children of that age, uh, see if their school is using that. Or if you yourselves have children of that age or, or no children of that age, uh, please look into it. The students also win very interesting awards and safety supplies for a Shake Mob Challenge. Um, I love the name. And I was kidding about the dance. We're really not going to do it. <laughs> the second event, then, we'll change the slide, please, is a Rocket Rule Sense of Safety, SOS, that challenge. And this is a partnership with the University of California's Safe Communities Institute and America's Safe Schools Week. And the goal of the SOS challenge is to provide children with a sense of safety, no matter where they are. That's something we don't think about very often. We've recently uh, talked in the earthquake uh, department, so to speak, about what do you do in an earthquake if you're not at home, if you're in a, in a big box department store, if you're in the car, or those kinds of things. And we're doing some short videos about those topics. Well, this is the same kind of thing. No matter where you are, what should your children do to keep their sense of safety? Um, so now is the time for them to look at your, the parents or the school teachers or the uh, uh, boy, boys club, girls club folks, um, any group that works with young children. Uh, a lot of children are homeschooled. This would be perfect for parents um, who homeschool. Uh, to look at the website, again, rocketrules.org, and uh, register for this uh, sense of safety challenge. The, the children look at videos. Uh, they're all available on the website, website at no cost. 
Um, and they're excellent, absolutely excellent. They're vetted by, this is vetted by the Los Angeles Police Department, by uh, the, the best of the best uh, people who know um, about the business that they're in uh, with just excellent references. So they're not someone's bright idea. They're much, much more than that. So I hope, uh, again, folks will uh, contact rocketrules.org and sign up for a sense of safety challenge and win some of the prizes. Uh, this last uh, event here, SOS, one of the prizes is also the grand prize winners can win a $500 uh, voucher for a field trip or for uh, 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 playground equipment for their school. So please, I hope they take a look at that. It'd be great if they would. And, and now Marsha will talk more about Rocket Rules and actually her experience, she's been working for, I don't know how long. Three years. It, three years in the schools with children, actually working with uh, the Rocket Rules books. Thanks, Thank Marcia. you, nice to be here. Yes, um, Bunny, sorry, she can't be here, but I do serve on her board. It's amazing what they've accomplished. And this one is Cal OAS has accepted it. I mean, if you look in the back, so many sponsors, but I have to tell you, as an educator, to use these materials is pretty incredible. I'm always amazed when I go into a classroom and I ask the kids, what are you going to do when there's an earthquake? They all say the same thing. I mean, 90% get under the desk and hold onto my head. No, hold on to the desk, because you are you need to hold on to something, otherwise you're gonna be there with nothing over your head. So I, I can't emphasize how important this is, training children to go home and talk to their parents about these issues. And what I love about her materials is they're designed for K3, but I've also used them with fourth and fifth grade in a way they do work. And so it's, I think, critically important that the schools are implementing some of these ideas. The kids need to know this, and um, she's done an amazing job. So thank you all for the presentation. Thank you both. You've done an amazing job also um, with your, uh, your whole committee and the fact that you've been serving our city for so long. We thank you both. Any questions? Yes, I do. Can you just elaborate more on the videos, the short videos? Where are they? How can people see them? Do you want to just kind of give that a hit? Yeah. So if you go to rocketrulesofsafety.org, you can just go right to it. has everything. It has the challenge, which we just talked about. It has videos. It has what I love about it for teachers. It has a whole curriculum guide with lesson plans. I mean, it's so well thought out. It's incredible the amount of research that's gone into this, asking the experts what is really important to include. And that's all included in our lesson plan, so it's very well done. But on the, on the tips, none of these go on like Ranch Mirage uh, television or the library or the chamber? Have you ever tried to do that or is that a no-no or what? <laughs> I guess not yet, but. <laughs> um, the kiosk in the library does have Yeah, the kiosk in the library does have some of very this good. too. Very good, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the veterans have done a tremendous job. Fabulous. And Charlie, one of the videos that's outstanding that you mentioned, it was, was done by the LA Dodgers' Justin Turner. Oh. And it's an incredible video where he uh, basically is interactive with Rocket. And it is so effective. And of course, here he is, the major league ball player, a star, interacting with Rocket, it's extremely effective. And not only is Rocket been done here, but as Mary, Ann, Mary Lou pointed out, uh, it's done with the uh, LA uh, Police Department, LA Fire Department, it's done with the Milwaukee Fire Department. It's hey, everybody. Really, it's really, truly, uh, uh, national, so they've done a great job. Rick and Bunny are, are philanthropists par excellence. Thanks, Mary Lou. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned about uh, Rick and ben, uh, Bunny because they have stepped up to the plate like no one else we have ever seen. And uh, they've worked you know, across the, the whole West Coast and with law enforcement, with uh, fire departments, and um, they have made everything available to children free of charge. So if you have a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout group, or if you are doing any schooling at home and you want some of the materials, they're free of charge. And please feel free to give uh, us a call or call their website 
or their number, and uh, you'll figure out with them how to best uh, serve your family, and especially your children, uh, with the best safety device as possible. So thank you both for coming and speaking about it. And uh, uh, this is September, and this is uh, preparedness month, so we're out there plugging. Take care, and thank you again. And now we're going to move on to non-agenda public comments. And this is a time when uh, people have an opportunity from the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. And I have one yellow card here, and this is from Wally Melendez. Uh, good afternoon, City Council, Mayor Iris, uh, staff, employees, contractors, and we, the Pueblo. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to use my three minutes guaranteed by law, which makes me extremely happy. And I only have one subject. Of course, I have a lot of concerns, but I only have one <clears throat> subject when I come before a group like this. And that, that, that makes any sense, and that some may consider also important, not, not only myself, which is education. That's been my, my, my main subject that I've talked about for a lot of months, and we missed um, August, all of August, so, so um, <clears throat> that, that, uh, that, um, <clears throat> uh, so, so we missed uh, uh, <clears throat> August. So what about uh, education? What am I talking about here, education, Mayor Iris? Well, what I'm talking about is that we, when I talk about we, I'm talking about Rancho Mirage and Palm Desert. And also, uh, the trustees of the College of the Desert, which the way I understand it, they're trustees uh, of not only the College of the Desert, but other, other colleges, I believe, because they have a, a district that they, that, that they cover. But, but the main thing, as I've, all, as I've mentioned so many times, is, is that our uh, young people uh, have an opportunity to uh, acquire from their homegrown higher education institution a bachelor's degree uh, and not just an associate's degree, if you know what I mean. So that, that, that's what I keep plugging every time. And of course, I bring it up uh, with the Palm Desert City Council, and I bring it up at the, at the uh, uh, at, uh, college uh, trustees meetings. Of course, I've had only a, a couple of uh, bites that, that people are interested. I, I can tell people are interested, but most people don't understand how the system works. And I'll try to cover that later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to uh, City Council, board member comments, and reports. And how about if we start with Charlie down here? Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I will. As we are seeing the outbreak of the latest hurricane facing the East Coast, the news media is announcing the great need for blood donations because so many of the nation's supplies now will be going to the East Coast for help in the demand for this hurricane. For those able and willing to donate blood to this cause, you can find out how to by going online where blood donations can be made for the locations. Also, you can call your local hospital for information and locations. Now, I did go online, and it's very easy, just 
blood donations near me, and the first one that comes up is Community Blood Bank right here in Rancho Mirage. Phone number is 760-777-8844. No, and if you would do that, it would be greatly appreciated. And for those of you that can help, it's a great need for our country. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Dana? <clears throat> Nothing today, thank you. Okay, moving on to this side. Ted? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Iris. The highly anticipated Marx Brothers collection has finally arrived at the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory and is now available, available to view in the David Bryan Showcase, located just inside the front entrance. On loan to the library from Rancho Mirage resident Bill Marks, Harpo's son, the collection features incredible, one-of-a-kind artifacts that can't be seen anywhere else. If you haven't already had a chance to view the collection, stop by to see Harpo's famous hairpiece and roller skate shoes alongside his practice harp and many other items used by the Marx Brothers, widely considered to be among the greatest and most influential comedians of the 20th century. <coughs> In this short video that follows, Bill Marx talks about why he wanted to have the collection on display in Rancho Mirage and discusses the area's importance to his family and the, the history of comedic entertainment. And if we can watch the video, please. Dad and the brothers actually were domiciled down here. They, they had homes down here in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. And I thought, what a wonderful place to take all of this and uh, put, the, put the rest of it where it really belongs. They had a great affection for the desert. They loved it. I was, I was told that it would be a, a wonderful addition to what I consider one of the great libraries of the world. That was the, the, the idea, is to make people aware of where they're living and to make out-of-towners say, hey, wait a moment, there's a place in Rancho Mirage, I can, I can learn the history of humor, of comedy, of the people that made people laugh and feel really wonderful. And I think this is a fabulous place, Rancho Mirage. This, is, this exhibit is scheduled to be at the library until next summer. Uh, I'm pleased that Bill is with us today. Um, Bill, as I mentioned to you before the meeting today, I would ask that you stand, and if you desire, you're more than welcome to say a few words and tell us how you feel. I'm going to say a few more things and embarrass you while you're here. <laughs> And uh, if you feel inclined, come on up to the uh, podium and say a couple of words. We'd be delighted to hear from you. And uh, as you're walking up, I'll continue. Come on up, Bill. Come on up to the podium. The origin of this project really started at Bill's house some time ago. And David Bryant, Aaron, Richard Kite, myself, and various representatives of Bill's estate met both here at City Hall and at Bill's house. And we talked about the display of the material, uh, the immense amount of memora memorabilia that Bill has, and it could go on and on. Rancho Mirage has a rich history of former entertain entertainers in the comedy world, including, of course, Lucille Ball and Bob Hope, all residents of Rancho Mirage. It's a great honor. Uh, for us to display your incredible collection, Bill, of this comedic history. Please come up 
and uh, say a few words, if you will. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here in front of you folks. Um, <clears throat> this isn't just about the Marx Brothers. Or, this is about all the great comedians that domiciled down here, part-time, full-time, the greats, Lucy and Jack Benny and, and uh, many, many of the people that, um, that, we, that, that helped project comedy through the 20th century. Uh, if there was a possibility down the line of creating a comedy or humor museum um, uh, uh, artifacts and as well as uh, 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 archival, it would be a wonderful addition to Rancho Mirage Public Library, which is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and I haven't seen them all, but as it's state of the art, uh, I think it would be a, a tremendous uh, I don't know how to say it any other way that if we had some kind of a, a magnet museum down here, the reciprocity would be amazing through because you, they have traveling uh, events and and uh, and we could get could get things from Jamestown, New York, which is Lucy's place. And the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences has a number of the things that I, I, I gifted to them. And we, we, there's just, to have a, a focus for people to come down, just like Cooperstown, where, where do you go? To, where do you go to Cooperstown just to see a Hall of Fame baseball? And uh, I think it would be a tremendous addition to this wonderful city that we live in and has been created largely due to people that that have been dedicated their entire life to finding a place that they really enjoy coming to and staying here and living here. You got some wonderful, wonderful talent and I, I, I'm at a loss for words anymore. I'm going to turn into doing my imitation of Harpo Marx. <laughs> <laughs> I thank Ted. I thank everybody here for having the opportunity to uh, to participate. And one thing that was the most important to me is that when you do go into the library, there's a reason for that being there, that, that display. It's because it was one of your prominent, prominent uh, uh, citizens, even though it was still Cathedral City at that time. But I gotta tell you, my, my mother stayed right on through, and she was in one of the most famous of all Comedy, um, comedy movies with W. C. Fields and uh, Andy Clyde and Ben Turpin, all those guys. So she has a, 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 had a great impact down here, not as a, as an actress, but as a an ed, a, a part part of the educational system down here. And anyway, uh, what can I tell you? I my, even my cousin Bob Marks. His gummo son, and uh, what is it? Mo is it Modernism Week? He's now become very famous with a lot of the things, a lot of the uh, the houses that uh, he built down here in the fifties, for for many of the people that uh, came down from Hollywood to stay here, either full time or part time. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to chat and
Thank you, Bill. Bless Thanks you for all. everything. Thanks for everything you and the family have done. You know, I would like to say, Bill, I was in the library yesterday, and coming in through the front doors, you cannot not stop and look at that display. And what you're saying is, is a well worth the effort, and I'm very proud that we have it in Ranch Mirage. Hopefully just the beginning of something that could be very, very great. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. That's it. Richard, did you have any comments? Thank you, Mayor. And Bill, it's great to have you here today. Nice to see you. And good afternoon to everybody. It's uh, great to start a new season here in Ranch Mirage. Thanks for being here today. And at the same time that we start, most of the schools in the area have begun their season also. And especially the Ranch Mirage High School Rattler football team. After two weeks of playing, the Rattlers are 2-0 and after beating 29 Palms, 39 to nothing. And last week we attended the game in Coachella and the Rattlers beat Coachella 30 to nothing. Tomorrow night, the Rattlers travel to Colton for their third game. This year, the league has been restructured with a lot more local emphasis, and the teams in the new league, the Desert Valley League, are Palm Springs, Palm Desert, McKinta, Xavier, and Shadow Hills. This year will really prove to be an exciting year for the Rattlers. We invite you all to come out and root the home team on. Varsity games start at 7 p.m. at the school grounds with the next game or the next home game being in two weeks against Centris Hill. That's Friday the 13th. So remember, go out and support your Rattlers and go Rattlers. Okay. Well, thank you, Richard. Yes, go Rattlers. And I would be remiss if I didn't make comment about Bill Marks, uh, because as talented as uh, all the, the Marks brothers were, Bill Marks is certainly a great talent also. And he has been around the desert for years and years and uh, making appearances, and he is also a valued talent, talent in his own right. So we thank you for being able to share uh, all the memorabilia that you have brought to our library. Thank you. To you, too. Thank you. And now I would like to uh, do my presentations, of which I have two. The first and foremost, though, is I would like to pay tribute and present an award to a very special person in our community. Unfortunately, he is unable to be here in person today to accept this award, but in the next few days, several of us will be visiting him at home to make an official presentation However, he always watches our city council meetings so I can speak directly to him. And uh, I think we're gonna show a photo of him. And there's Dennis. <clears throat> this very important person of whom I am speaking is Dr. Dennis Maletti. And the city of Rancho Mirage has been so fortunate to have had Dennis as a technical cut advisor and continues to have him as an advisor to the Emergency Preparedness Commission for over 10 years. His professional life has been quite admir admirable. He is a professor emeritus at the University of Colorado at Boulder, where he served as director from 1994 to 2003 of the Natural Hazard Center, which is actually the United States Clearinghouse for social and behavioral science research related to hazards and disasters. So Dennis, I know you are watching. On behalf of the city and the Emergency Preparedness Commission, I am honored to present this award of recognition to you for your 10 plus years of outstanding service and support to our city and its residents. Dennis, we thank you for all your hard work and dedication and for always being there when we needed you, but also for acting as our right-hand go-to person. 
and as always, stepping up to the plate even before you were asked. And in fact, if it were not for you, Dennis, your fine reputation and your great communications and, and connections in your field, so many of our wonderful town hall speakers would not have been available to us. So, although we are missing you here today, we thank you immensely, we congratulate you, and this award will soon be in your hands, and we wish you all the best. And this is the award, and I will just read it briefly. City of Rancho Mirage presents to Dennis S. Maletti, PhD, in recognition of your 10 plus years of outstanding service and support to our city and its residents. We thank you for your hard work and dedication as an advisor to our commission. With heartfelt gratitude, Rancho Mirage Mayor Iris Spotridge and the Emergency Preparedness Commission, September 2019. Thank you again, Dennis, and we wish you all the best. Are there any comments from any of the council members? Okay, anyone in the audience want to speak? Well, I think we see Mary Lou Souter coming up, and um, she is our chairperson of our Emergency Preparedness Commission. Thanks for the opportunity just to say a few words. I um, spoke with Dennis and asked if he thought he would be able to come and receive the award, so I let the cat out of the bag that there would be an award presented, and he was very humbled and uh, sad that he couldn't be here in person. But um, he apologized, and he said his health problems just prohibit his attendance, um, and he appreciates all your thoughts and good wishes. Um, so on his behalf, I'd just like everyone to expand their emergency preparedness efforts uh, beyond having water available or collecting supplies uh, those are excellent starts, but to remember to discuss emergency preparedness with your families and to have a plan for your preparedness. It is a serious thing. And uh, with your spouse, with your family, with your children, to really talk about what you would do to respond to an earthquake. First of all, how you should prepare, how you would respond, and then how you would recover from that kind of a disaster and make yourselves a plan. A short plan's better than no plan, so make yourselves a plan, it's an important thing. So um, the, more you, um, the more you make those kinds of things a, a regular part of your lives, the more likely you'll be to make a good recovery. And so on Dennis's behalf, I know he's honored, and I thank you for that. Thank you so much. And we thank you, Mary Lou. And we'll be putting this in Dennis's hand in just a few days. And on to my uh, second report, because I, today I wanted to share something about an incredible nonprofit that is making a huge difference in many people's lives, the United Cerebral Palsy of the Inland Empire. This organization was founded in 1985, and its mission is to advance the independence, productivity, and full citizenship of children and adults with all developmental disabilities, including cerebral palsy, autism, Down syndrome, intellectual disabilities, and other special needs. They have been able to provide <coughs> their programs and family support services at no cost to local special needs families. And the fundraising events they hold throughout the year and after school programs are remarkable. They have also provided adaptive bicycle programs. And these programs have a huge impact on the children and families. And you can see on the screen, this summer I had the absolute pleasure of watching as 12 children were presented with their very own adaptive bicycles. It was a joy to see the children as they rode around on a bike that was custom made for each of them. They were designed for mobility, therapy, 
recreation, and freedom. To date, UCP, which is the United Cerebral Palsy Association, has been able to award a total of 73 adaptive bicycles. And how amazing is that? And when, something that is even more amazing is the um, ability for all the children or adults that finish with their bicycles, because they have usually grown out of them, to turn their bicycles back into the organization, and those bicycles are rebuilt and passed on to other people of need. So it's a, uh, uh, an incredible amount of um, recirculation, and we are so proud of the work they do. If you're interested in getting more information about them, you can contact them at www.ucp ie.com. They're quite remarkable. We're thrilled with the work they are doing and the fact that these bicycles were presented at our Children's Museum made it even more special. Thank you. Okay, so now we will move on to a just a maybe a 10 or 15 second video because this is of our dog park. And even though it's a little bit on the warm side, you can see that all the people are turning out. They come with their dogs. They come with a few toys. And they are ready to play. So even though it's still a little warm, please don't hesitate to go to our dog park. Make some new friends. Let your pets make some new friends. And uh, enjoy our park. It's there for you, and we're thrilled that we could provide it. Thank you. OK. And now we're going to move on to our city manager comments. Isaiah? I uh, just wanted to give the council an update. Uh, in July, uh, the council approved uh, for this room to have the hearing loop installed. And so that project is completed. And uh, so the hearing loop uh, allows somebody with a hearing aid, uh, their hearing aid uh, that is T-coil enabled, will automatically hook up and they'll be able to have uh, better enhanced sound through their own hearing aid, and they can control the volume uh, just like normal through their own hearing aid. So it's a fantastic addition uh, for this room and our meetings. We also have devices that people can check out if they would like. Uh, we also have a device that can be plugged into a cell phone, and it'll provide a transcript of our conversation uh, on their mobile device. Uh, that technology has also been installed over at the library and observatory. So uh, great additions to our public rooms. Thank you, Isaiah. OK, well, now we'll move on to our minutes. And today we have two sets of minutes to approve, one from July 18, 2019. It was a regular meeting. And so if there are no additions or corrections, may I have a motion to approve? No approved. Second. Okay. Are we approving one at a time? Yes. OK, so please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. And now, uh, if there are no additions or corrections to the August 7th special meeting, may I have a motion to approve that? So approved. Second. OK. Please vote. And motion carries 5-0. Thank you. And now we will move on to the consent calendar presented by our city manager, Isaiah. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. You have eight items on your consent calendar for consideration. Item number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. <clears throat> Item number two is the receive and file of our active transportation report and guidelines. Item number three is to approve the Ranch Mirage Energy Authority's 2018 power content label. Item number four is to approve the California Choice Energy Authority, known as CalChoice, entering into a long-term renewable energy contract with Three Phases Renewable Inc. on behalf of the Ranch Mirage Energy Authority. Item number five is another uh, approval of a contract for the California Choice Energy Authority <clears throat> to enter into a long-term renewable energy contract with Direct Energy Business Marketing, LLC, on behalf of the Rancher Mirage Energy Authority. Item number six are uh, 17 awards to, uh, totaling 47,000 through our Special Assistance Fund. 
Item number seven is the contracts. There are two contracts on the list for your consideration. And item number eight are demands. And staff is here to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions? Question, Iris. Really a, a comment on uh, item number six, which is the SAF awards. Want to thank the, the staff that uh, has worked so hard on this, led by Gloria Griego. <clears throat> she has done this year in and year out and really has devoted a lot of time to working with council and the council reps this year were Iris and Ted. But uh, thank you, Gloria, you do a great job and uh, it's a really a difficult process to go through all of the submittals and select a very limited few. So yeah. good job and thanks to the council members. Gloria keeps us all organized and well informed. <laughs> she certainly does. <clears throat> And there is a lot of work that goes into it, and uh, we're just thrilled to work with her and uh, continue for many more years. Thank you. Okay, so now, do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. 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 Okay, please vote. And motion carries, 5-0. Okay. We will now move on to uh, a special report, an informational item, and this is going to be done by Aaron Espinoza, and he is our uh, library executive director, and this is a library and observatory update. Welcome. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, City Council, and City Staff. Um, we are very excited about all the things that are coming up at the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. Um, one item that did not make the update happened last night. Um, it was our Inspire Imagination um, based on uh, a theater program, and 14 students submitted their stories, and we had improv actors, uh, uh, thanks to uh, the Moan Carr Productions, they improv acted six, or I'm sorry, 14 stories and brought them to life. Um, many of you know Dustin Ningham, our uh, AV technician. He has done hundreds, if not thousands, of programs for our library and observatory. And he came into my office this morning and said that might have been the most inspirational program that we've held at the Ranch Mirage Library. It brought the kids to life. It brought all the audience to life. And he was so appreciative that we were able to do that. So I just wanted to give that little update. Um, we are going to do an update, but in this time, we're going to go to a video. Hi there. I'm Aaron Espinoza, the Library and Observatory Director. Thank you for joining me. I'd like to talk about some of the things we've been doing here at the library, as well as things that are coming up this fall. Currently, we have four new exhibits or art installations I'd like to tell you about. Let's start with one of the most anticipated collections on display at the Library and Observatory, the Marx Brothers Collection. Bill Marx, the son of Harpo Marx and Rancho Mirage resident, has loaned a vast array of his personal collection of memorabilia, costumes, instruments, books, and props belonging to the legendary Marx Brothers. The community's feedback has been great, with many patrons stopping by and reminiscing about the days in which the Marx Brothers' faces would come to life on TV and the movie screen to bring smiles and laughter to everyone watching. Another exhibit that is currently on display just outside our quiet study room is the Apollo Program Collection. We want to thank longtime Rancho Mirage residents, Bonnie and Bill Anderson, for loaning the library their private collection of Apollo program memorabilia. The family worked in the aerospace industry and curated this amazing collection of vintage photographs, documents, and letters. Opposite the Apollo program collection, just outside the quiet study room, is a very special exhibit that will be on display for many years to come. The personal library, a Pulitzer Prize winner, Herman Woke. Herman passed away in May at the age of 103, but before doing so, selected our library to be the final resting spot for his personal collection due to the respect and appreciation our community has for literature. Herman's collection includes some notes and progression of his writings, books and personal notes from other authors, and several awards and photos of Herman himself. We are very honored 
to have this amazing collection, and we hope people of all ages come to see this collection of such a wonderful man and writer. The fourth and latest addition to the Library and Observatory may have been the most fun for our patrons, residents, and staff. As part of the Summer Reading Club, the library hosted a program called Flying Paint. Participants got to fill pool toys with paint and then squirt it against canvases with letter templates. It was fun for all ages. But what I'm most excited about is the canvases were then hung in the children's room as an art installation. The children of our community coming together and having fun and now seeing their work on our walls is quite special to me and our staff. We are known as the cultural center of the Coachella Valley. We take pride in all of our services for our residents and our surrounding communities, but it is our programming that is setting us apart. In the next few months, we're gonna hit the ground running with music performances ranging from the history of blues in America to great music of Broadway and Hollywood from the wonderful pianist Richard Glazier to the band who blends Celtic, bluegrass, and second line music with the punk rock edge, Finnegan Blue. There's a three-part series titled Who's Afraid of Opera? A look into how opera started and continues to have such power to stir our souls and to touch our hearts. If modernism in the history of Rancho Mirage piques your interest, don't miss the lecture, Historic Neighborhoods, how the city of Rancho Mirage grew from 1955 to 1975, presented by Melissa Ritchie. We've also partnered with the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens for a three-part lecture series on conservation topics. It sounds like an amazing lineup, but we're not done yet. We'll be screening films that include The Naked Kiss, which will be hosted by actor Michael Dante, who starred in the film. And for the epic Roadshow musical film series, we are bringing in award-winning educator James Griswold to present A Star is Born, West Side Story, Funny Girl, and Hello Dolly. For families with children, we have many fun programs and activities scheduled. This fall, we will host story time, have book discussion groups, our Design It Make It series, Lego Club, and Family Nights. This month, we will host two weeks of youth theater workshops, which are a crash course in vocals, dancing, and acting led by musical theater professionals. These workshops culminate in a fully staged Broadway musical production titled Susical Junior with fully orchestrated tracks, scenery, props, and costumes. Be sure to mark your calendar and join us at the performance at the Rancho Mirage Amphitheater on Saturday, November 16th at 7 p.m. And not to be forgotten is our award-winning observatory. This fall, we will have three original lectures from city astronomer Eric McLaughlin, where he will be discussing Jupiter, the king of the planets. Where do we go from here? A look at the possible futures of humanity in space. And Mercury, scorched land of a wobbling sun. In addition to our regularly scheduled stargazing events, we have added Swoon at the Moon, where we will have three separate evenings to view the moon in its first quarter phase. During this event, we will explore volcanic features, impact craters, and lunar swirls. It is also a prime time to view the Terminator, where light meets dark. Everyone is welcome with no registration required. Be sure to come by the library and pick up a program or log on to our website at www.RanchoMirageLibrary.org and click on the program banner or the icon program guide to see an electronic version. If you would like regular reminders on our programming and events, you can always sign up for our emails by clicking on the e-newsletter sign up. Moving on from our terrific programming, I'd like to share some improvements we're making to enhance your experience at the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. This September, we will be simplifying our library card system, allowing you to carry just one card. This one card will give you access to all of our services and programs. Any cardholder can choose one of the winning designs from this summer's library card design contest. We had 45 entries and selected two winners, Caitlin Honor, and Daphne Lee. How amazing is it to be able to have these young ladies' designs available for everyone to enjoy? So come see for yourself all the amazing things we have to offer. Library staff and I are always here to answer any questions or to help find what you are looking for. We hope to see you soon.
Uh, I would like to thank uh, Gabe and uh, Jess Stevens, our marketing team, uh, Dustin Ingham, who's in our audience. Uh, they help produce this video. Um, and the nice thing about this video is we will actually be putting an RMTV on our website. So it'll be a multi-use uh, function. So. Very good. Now, most of these programs or all of these programs are free? All of our programming is free. Including all the children's things and the programs that they do for children's the theater. Everything is free thanks to our foundation. It's a wonderful program. Great job. Thank you. Wonderful, Aaron. Wonderful. Aaron, it just gets better every year. You're gonna, at some point, you're going to run out of new, exciting <laughs> offerings. But you do a fantastic job. Yeah. Sir. Amazing. It's amazing. You really do an amazing job. And um, every time I'm there, I, all I can say is, wow. And uh, both Charlie and I were there last night to see the presentation on the stage and all the children in the front. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you took a head count or not, but um, the parents and the children were just thrilled to see the performances on the stage, and uh, it is truly inspiring, and certainly inspires others to uh, get involved. So thank you again, and um, I don't think you're ever, with your talented group, I don't think you're ever going to run out of ideas. Let's hope not. <laughs> yes. Anyway, thank, thank you. you again. We look forward to seeing it all on Ranch and Mirage Television. I will say one thing. Last night when uh, we were going in to see the show last night, and Aaron said, uh, well, I've got, I'm, I'm running. Where were you going last night in a hurry, all of your group? Uh, we, had a pri we had a private event uh, at the Rancho La Quinta. Wonderful. You never stop, you guys. We did not <laughs> stop yesterday at all. Great, great job. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, item number 10, which is part of our public hearings. And uh, for this, we're going to have Kofi Antobam. He's the Director of Administrative Services, and he's going to be presenting this. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon, Council. Consistent with the approved development agreement um, for the Del Webb project, on July 18, 2019, the City Council approved resolution numbers 2019-40 and 2019-41, which called for the public hearing we are conducting today. The purpose of today's public hearing is to establish the Community Facilities District number 4B Del Webb project. You may recall that the entire Del Webb project is anticipated to be developed in six phases under three separate CFDs. The proposed actions today in CFD number 4B covers the third and fourth phases of the Del Webb project, which represents 307 single family homes. It is expected that the future, a future CFD number 4C will be created to cover the final two phases of the project. So to date, CFD 4A has been formed, um, which covered 328 um, single family homes for the Del Webb project. As part of the development of the Del Webb project, there are significant public improvements that are being made. And under this process, some of these improvements will be financed with bond proceeds that will be coming from a future debt issuance. And this debt is not a city debt, but debt specific to the project um, CFD4B, and is going to be repaid by the property owners within that project. Annually, the debt service requirements will be assessed onto property tax rolls to fund the debt service. It is anticipated that the, the CFD tax will range from $800 to $1,300 per year, depending on the home size. All homeowners are notified during the purchase process of the special taxes that they will be responsible for during the, um, the buying of their homes. The debt is estimated not to exceed $7 million for this phase of the project. And um, this debt is not expected to be issued until the spring or summer of 2020. At that time, all actions relating to this issuance will be brought back to the council for review and approval. Again, I would like to state that this is not an obligation of the city of Rancho Mirage. It will be specific to CFD4B and will be repaid from 
revenue that are going to be assessed on property owners. There is no fiscal impact to the city um, as a result of um, facilitating this process. And so staff recommends um, approval of the actions as outlined in the staff report. And um, that concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. This is a public hearing. So are there any comments from the public? Seeing none, we'll close the public uh, part, portion of our meeting and move on to council comments. No comments, either side, okay. Um, now the city council will take action on items one, resolutions A through C. So may I have a motion? And yeah. a second. And, and, and Mayor, the, the motion can uh, be that the City Council uh, approve resolutions A through C as identified in the staff report on page 10 1. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Please. Before we vote, uh, Okay, we'll just, Next. okay, so why don't we go ahead and cast our votes. And motion carries, 5-0. Okay, and now we will ask our city clerk to open the ballot and declare election results. Yes. Madam Mayor, the ballot for the 88 eligible votes was received on August 29th, 2019, and was in favor. Therefore, votes cast in favor equal 100% of total votes cast. Thank you, Christy. So the council will now take action on item number two, which is uh, letters D and E, and ask for a motion on D and E. Motion to approve. And a second. second. Please vote. And motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Okay, we are now gonna move on to item number 11. And this is going to also be presented by Kofi Antobam. He is the Director of Administrative Services and he will be giving us some background information. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this item is to hold a public hearing on annexation 179 into Community Facilities District Number One. And this is the second step in the city's standard process for annexation of development within the city's jurisdiction. The first step was considered on the July 18, um, 2019 council meeting. The territory proposed for annexation is located on the northeast corner of Bob Hope Drive and Victory Drive and comprises of portions of two parcels totaling approximately 1.91 acres. This project proposes a 13,812 square foot one-story building medical office. On July 18, 2019, the City Council adopted resolution number 2019-39, declaring its intent, intention to annex this territory into CFD <coughs> number one and to levy a special tax and set the time and place for the public hearing on the proposed annexation. The petition filed by the owner allows for a shortening of the time for the special election to expedite the annexation process. As a result, the public hearing on the proposed annexation and the levy of a special tax may take place at today's meeting. And in the absence of a majority protest, the special election on the levy of special tax may also take place at this meeting. At the conclusion of today's public hearing, provided written protests have not been filed, the city council may consider adoption of the attached resolution calling an election, declaring the results of the special election, determining the validity of prior proceedings, approving the annexation of the territory, and directing staff to record an amendment to the notice of special tax lien. Staff recommends approval of the resolution as attached um, on item number 11. And that concludes my staff report. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Kofi. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Christy and you can uh, give us the election results. Yes, Madam Mayor, the ballot for the two eligible votes was received on August 8th, 2019 and was in favor. 
Therefore, votes cast in favor equal 100% of total votes cast. Okay, and if there are any public members that would like to speak to this issue, now would be the time. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing portion, and um, I will read the motion uh, that I will make that the City Council adopt resolution number 2019 next in order, calling an election on levying a special tax within the area proposed to be annexed to Community Facilities District Number 1, Annexation Number 179, declaring the election results, approving the annexation of the territory, and directing the recording of the amendment of notice of special tax lien in connection with approval of preliminary development plan permit PDP19001. Is there a second? Second. Okay, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Kofi. And now we will move on to item number 12. And this is uh, part of our action calendar. And this will be taken care of by Marcus Alleman, who is our housing manager. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor Smotrich, City Council and City staff. Beginning May 1st, 1982, the city has regulated rent increases for mobile home parks pursuant to Rancho Mirage Municipal Code Chapter 9.58, Mobile Home Rent Control. As currently written, Chapter 9.58 permits mobile home park owners to request a rent increase in an amount no greater than three-fourths of the increase in the cost of living as indicated in the Consumer Price Index for the Los Angeles, Anaheim, Riverside metropolitan area, and no more than one increase is allowed in any 12-month period. The United States Department of Labor, which compiles and publishes the Consumer Price Index, now publishes information for the Riverside, San Bernardino area, on, excuse me, Riverside, San Bernardino, Ontario area. The current language in section 9.58.010 permits increases based on an area which has a greater cost of living than in this county. Staff recommends an amendment to section 9.58.010 to change the consumer price index from the Los Angeles, Anaheim, Riverside metropolitan area to the Riverside, San Bernardino, Ontario area to better reflect the cost of living within the city. Thank you. Okay, any questions or comments from council? Mm. Okay. Mm. This, this does take in all mobile homes straight across, right? Uh, no, uh, it doesn't no. include blue skies. Um, is it, it only applies to the um, Paul Placeris Park, Rancho yes. Mirage Community Park, and Colony. Yeah. Okay, so just those. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> okay. Would someone like to make a motion? I will make the motion that the City Council introduce ordinance number next in order, amending section 9.58.010, Definitions of Chapter 9.58, Mobile Home Rent Control of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code to clarify that maximum rent increases are based upon the consumer price index of the Riverside, San Bernardino, Ontario area. And I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. And now we will move on to item number 13, and that will be handled by Isaiah Hagerman, our city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this resolution uh, before you today um, is about um, protecting customer choice and local control of their energy needs. Uh, so within the state of California, uh, there are many climate-related uh, goals and uh, part of the reason that we started the Ranch Mirage Energy Authority was to start to make a difference uh, in that front as well, which is why we offer a cleaner energy product than Southern California Edison at a cheaper price. Um, however, we think that uh, what this resolution calls for is some balance and to respect the customer's ability to choose for themselves. So there have been several attempts by the state to uh, mandate and ban uh, gas products, uh, natural gas products, so that would uh, force consumers into going into all electric. 
Um, and really, um, this resolution doesn't want to get in the back and forth of, you know, what's good for some, what's not good for others. What we're really calling for with this resolution is just to respect the customer's choice to choose for themselves. So based on, um, you know, their unique set of circumstances, uh, some customers may choose to go all electric, others may choose to stay on their gas. Uh, out here, we uh, already struggle with very high electric bills. Uh, another reason that we started the Ranch Mirage Energy Authority was to try to make a difference on that front. And so uh, to tell our community that already has extremely high electric bills that now they have to go all electric with everything else that isn't electric, it's just going to make that bill that much higher. Uh, so what this resolution does is it calls uh, just basically a resolution of support to respect the customer's ability to choose for themselves. Uh, we did uh, review uh, this item with the subcommittee, so I'd like to thank the subcommittee for their input and uh, direction during this process. And uh, we did get some uh, uh, facts from the Southern California Gas Company. And so just like on the energy side, um, we're moving towards more renewable products. Well, the gas company is doing the same with uh, re more you know, renewable natural gas uh, within their uh, distribution as well. Uh, so with that, the uh, subcommittee is recommending that the council approve this item. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Isaiah. Any questions or comments? Isaiah, the majority of the other cities in the Coachella Valley are going along with this? Yeah, I didn't specifically analyze the uh, Coachella Valley. Uh, the gas company representative is here. De Deborah, maybe you can comment on that. You would probably know that better. I know there have been several jurisdictions that have approved it out here in the Coachella Valley. And uh, within their territory, the Southern California Gas Territory, there's been 87 other jurisdictions that have approved a resolution similar to this one. And as of last week, we're at 94. Hey, there you go. So um, again, my name is Deborah McGarry. I'm the Public Affairs Manager for Southern California Gas Company. I want to thank uh, the City Manager for his time and me bugging him continuously, asking him about uh, the possibility of supporting this resolution. And again, it's about customer choice. Um, we commend the city with where they're going with regards to renewable energy. Um, I did take a look at the information that was uh, approved for your CCA and part of it included biomass. That's part of where we're going. Biomass includes what's called biogas. So CalGas goal is actually to have up to 20% in our system by 2030 of renewable natural gas. We've invested $5 million, which we received from a grant from California Public Utilities Commission, to, with a dairy um, up in Central California to start capturing that methane. So just to kind of give you a little bit of history of where we're going. So we're, we're doing a lot with it. And if you wanted more information, I could provide that, but I don't want to take too much of your time. But to answer the question, we have more than half of the cities in the Coachella Valley have supported our resolution. So we have Indio, La Quinta, right. Indian Wells, um, and some of the other ones I'm still working through, Desert Hot Springs, um, um, Cathedral City. Uh -huh. And so, um, and actually, of the cities that I manage right now, we have over 11 and we're continuously adding on. Like I said, we have of our service territory um, close to about 40, I forget what the percentage is, 47%. Don't quote me on that. It's about 43, 44% of all of the cities that we serve have now adopted this resolution. Okay. So we're, do, we're doing well. Yeah, Good. sounds like it. Hopefully, I answered your question. Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, uh, Councilman Hobart and I actually sat through a presentation. Uh, uh, the state is, uh, has a law in the books uh, that soon uh, residential uh, food scrap and green waste, uh, you'll have a separate container for that at your home because that needs to start being recycled. We already have it right now for our commercial account uh, businesses, so restaurants, things like that. They already have this container where they will recycle food scraps. Uh, for the residential, you can mix your uh, yard clippings with any food scraps. And uh, the presentation that we sat through was, uh, you know, obviously during that process, you have to find something to do with that. So composting is part of that. And, and what do you do with uh, the byproduct, which is this bio natural gas? And uh, do you just let it escape into the atmosphere or do you try to capture that? And uh, you can start to fuel your fuel trucks with it. You can, uh, at night, when you don't have solar energy on the grid, you can use this uh, renewable, sustainable, natural gas 
uh, to uh, supplement energy needs when we don't have all the solar and wind that we have during the day. So it was a rather interesting uh, presentation. Uh, so I kind of think this fits in well with what we're all going to be expected to do, to do here soon is we're going to be uh, diverting waste from landfills, which is always a good thing. Uh, and we're going to have to figure out what to do with all this uh, organics that used to end up in the landfills. Uh, and this seems like a very relevant solution to uh, one of those problems that uh, may be um, supplemental to this law change. So the renewable natural gas is definitely uh, something uh, that will grow into the future, and it has a lot of possibilities. Anywhere you can use natural gas, you can use this renewable natural gas. So. Well, thank you, Isaiah. That explains a lot. Amazing. Yes, it is Answer truly that. all amazing. Uh -huh. Yes, Richard. A uh, subcommittee made up of myself and Ted Weil right. uh, would uh, ask for unanimous support of this attached resolution. Okay. Well, would you like to make a motion? So moved. Okay. And a second? Second. Okay. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. And your city number 95. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. If there's any questions that you may have about this, please let me know. And I will also let you know that SoCal Gas has been working with one of the waste haulers, and they are actually fueling 400 of their trucks with renewable natural gas coming from the um, organic materials. So thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to item number 14. And that is going to be presented by uh, our city engineer, William Enos, and otherwise known as Bill. And uh, it's approval of signing and striping plans for citywide REAS -E slurry seal project. Thank you, Madam Thank you. Mayor, members of city council. Well, that was a mouthful, and this is the yes. <laughs> most exciting item I've been looking forward to all meeting. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> What we're looking for today is uh, city council approval of the striping plan. You've each been provided a, a, a full copy of the plan. Um, early in our meeting today and the consent agenda, uh, you received and filed the report, the active transportation guidelines and best practices report was prepared by AECOM, a consultant of the cities which proposed safety improvements for uh, cycling purposes. An important component of that plan was that we look for opportunities to uh, expand the uh, active transportation network and improve the safety of the facilities, uh, identifying opportunities. One of those opportunities when the city does slurry projects. As you recall, uh, recently the city contracted with PMI to do a citywide slurry project, some 3.3 million square feet, which includes residential streets as well as uh, arterial roadways. Several of those arterials lend themselves to uh, creating additional bike lanes by reconfiguring the striping and, and installing additional safety improvements. That's what we're here to talk about. Side note about the slurry project, we're actually slated to start construction next week. They'll be removing stripes Monday starting slurry on Tuesday. Originally, we'd anticipate the contractor would have one crew. It would take 22 days. He now has two crews available, so it will take two weeks. So we will have the blitzkrieg of slurry projects going on the next two weeks, so be prepared. Contractors have been uh, um, notifying businesses and residents. has started this week. It's one week minimum um, notice to businesses adjacent to slurry projects, and then another notice for businesses 72 hours prior. Residential areas will get 72 hours uh, notice, and then uh, there'll be... Uh, the placards, the no parking signs in the streets and all that too. So again, starting next week, slurry project. In preparation for that, uh, again, seizing on the opportunity, the staff prepared this signing and striving plan that you have. Uh, it shows not only the meeting the Caltrans requirements and the MUTCD requirements for the stripes, spacing, etc., also implementing these active transportation improvements. Special thanks to our city our city associate engineer Chet Can for his hard work on this plan. He worked early mornings, late evenings, and several weekends to put this plan together in a fairly short period of time. So job well done to Chet. Yeah, and Bill, just to piggyback on that, um, 
you know, having uh, the capable staff that we do, uh, they always try to do things internally before we pay external consultants. So being able to utilize Chet for the striping plan saved the city $20,000. So significant savings because we have capable staff. So a big thank you to uh, Chet and all of his hard work and uh, early mornings and late hours that he put in getting the striping plan done. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, staff also enlisted the services of Rocky Miller Associates, who is an expert in uh, active transportation and bicycle safety. We wanted to, him to plan check or plan to make sure we were uh, using the latest and greatest in bicycle safety. So we're all good there. <clears throat> the streets proposed for the new signing and striping include a portion of Bob Hope Drive from Frank Sinatra up to Dinah Shore. Also, Gerald Ford Drive from Plumley to Bob Hope, as well as Duval Drive from Ramon north to the city limit, those three main arterial streets. Um, in, addition, in addition to meeting all the requirements, we're, in the, we're proposing these um, uh, active transportation improvements. I'd like to kind of uh, touch on those, kind of highlight those improvements. May I have the first slide, please? The this is a portion of Gerald Ford you see in front of you at the western entrance into Mission Hills, that uh, snapshot. In that, you can see highlighted are the additional class two striped bike lanes that were added both on the north side of the roadway and the south. Uh, that's being made possible by, you can see the slight realignment of the skip line. By shifting that just to one foot narrower, it frees up enough distance to provide that six foot wide bike lane that was not there before. By rearranging the striping after the slurry, we're providing an additional two miles of uh, b striped bike lane on Gerald Ford Drive, mm -hmm. as well as, not shown in the drawing, but another half mile up on Duval, adjacent to the Tuscany project, will provide a, a bike lane up there also. So that's additional uh, bike lane will be provided by this uh, striping project. Uh, next slide, please. Also part of the program that's been recommended by AECOM is that we implement these green these uh, green highlighted bike stencils as you see in the left of the drawing. That draws attention to the uh, bike lanes. Those will be placed at the beginning and ends of the major intersections so it's clear to the cars at the intersection where the bikes go, where the cars go. And uh, also to the right, you can see one of the uh, measures we're implementing is the increased frequency of the white stencils. Rather than every 1,000 feet, it is recommended that we uh, double that frequency, put them in every 500 feet. And so that's what the plan shows that you have, uh, the striping plan you have. Next slide, please. Also part of that is increased signage. On the left are the bike lane signs. We're increasing the frequency of those as well as uh, designating the beginning and ending of the lane for the bicyclist, bicyclist knows when uh, to be uh, extra cautious when the bike lane ends. And to the right you see uh, the bottom right is a, sh a Caltrans standard Shero is what they're called. That is a, uh, a standard drawing that indicates that that lane is being shared by bicycles and cars traveling public. Mostly those are used when the bikes and the cars share a right turn at an intersection. The Shero is also accompanied by the sign you see above that with the share the road, uh, the cautionary share the road sign. There's some other bike friendly signs that I'll point more out later. Next slide, please. This is another intersection. This is at uh, Frank Sinatra and Bob, whoops. I think that's the same one we had, is it not? No. And next slide, please. There we go. Okay, that's this slide shows the uh, again the increased frequency of the um, of the uh, the legends, the white legends, every 500 feet. Next slide, please. And then this slide shows the the buffers, the buffer lane. You can see there is on the top of the drawing three foot wide buffer lane. This is on Bob Hope, just north of the Sunnylands estate at the entrance into their maintenance facility. Uh, when there is sufficient width, staff is recommending providing a three foot buffer between the travel lane, the number two travel lane, and the bike lane, which is kind of a no man's land separating the, uh, the two, providing a safety zone between them. <clears throat> and uh, staff recommends uh, doing that, uh, again, because it was recommended in the study, and uh, 
fortunately, we have the opportunity to do that on Bob Hope, the entire length from Frank Sinatra, Sinatra up to uh, Dinah Shore, for the most part. There's some at the intersections where it gets too narrow, but for the most part, we can provide that buffer, that full two miles on both sides of the road. So that's, that's, uh, that's good for us. And um, staff believes by implementing these things they're recommending in the report that we can uh, increase the safety to the cyclists as well as the motoring public. And staff requests that city council approve the, uh, the signing and striping plans for the citywide re slurry project. I'm here to answer any questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. Any <clears throat> questions or comments? Yeah, Bill, it seems like the, most of the mishaps seem to happen at the intersections. And I see where you guys have really improved upon that for safety. It's very good. Thank you. Okay. Any Bill, got a question as far as notification to the residents of the city. Uh, are we going to have notices going out, uh, not only in the newspaper, but other public relation notices? Yes, the city will do uh, as we typically do when there's uh, permit work, uh, we send out an email blast that goes to the residences who have signed up for that as well as the media outlets. So the radio stations will have those notices. There'll be a map attached with the description of basically what's going on. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, Bill, I think also <clears throat> you notify uh, HOAs, do you not? Yes, thank you for pointing that out. Yes, staff is con following up with each of the HOAs adjacent to the work, as well as the police and fire to make sure. Now, the contractor has contacted them already. We'll follow up, make sure if there are any questions from the city's perspective we can help with. But yes, we're on top of that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and by distributing to the HOAs, <clears throat> they in turn, of course, obviously notify all of the people that uh, within their confines. The other important thing here is that We've approved the active transportation pro plan earlier this evening. And uh, what this does, the signage, uh, accounts for, and this is what we run into all the time, we, run it, we have signage uh, between the street and the sidewalks uh, of approximately 72 miles. Um, and, and we hear dialogue, of course, as it relates to the CV link and what uh, uh, what's going on within our city. And the thing that we can be most proud of is that we have 72 miles of bike, line, bike lanes that will be clearly marked between the street and the sidewalk. That's 72 miles. That is a significant amount uh, of uh, marked uh, bike lanes. So uh, well done, and you know, thanks to all of you for doing that. Perfect. Okay. Congratulations. And Congratulations, Thank you, Bill. and congratulations to you and your entire team. Uh, the fact that we're going to be having these bicycle imprints every 500 feet uh, will uh, really be a, a great help. And to have the green paint uh, that really yes. that really defines uh, where the bicycle paths uh, begin, and and uh, we're very fortunate that we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, any other comments? Now we can open to the public. If there are any comments from the public, seeing none, we'll close the public comments and call for a motion. I'll make a motion that the city council approve the subject signing and striping plans to be installed with the citywide RESA slurry seal project CP19-349. And I will second that. So please vote. Did I catch you off guard? <laughs> no, you didn't. Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Well, I think that is the end of our agenda, uh, and we will pass it on to our city, manager, city attorney, Steve Quintanilla. But before we do, I, have to, I would be very remiss if I didn't mention that today is his birthday, and that even though we're not going to sing him happy birthday right now, um, we all wish you the very best, and we're thrilled to have you as part of Thank you. As long as I'm still below the medium age of Rancher Mirage, which is like two years, <laughs> okay. I still feel young. <laughs> so the City Council is now going to recess into closed session to confer with legal counsel regarding three potential initiation of litigation items yeah. pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9D4. The Council will also meet with um, legal counsel regarding 
existing litigation uh, pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9D1. The case name is unspecified because disclosure of the case name may jeopardize existing settlement negotiations. Thank you, Steve. Okay, we will be adjourning, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.